Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, welcome to another edition of Oilers After Dark post-game reaction. Want to talk about it? What do you want to talk about? What 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 do you want to talk about? Do you want to talk about the Oilers? How bad they are? How good they are? How they missed McDavid? How they didn't need him for two periods? What are we talk about? We got the good. We got the bad. We got the downright f fugly. The good. Bouchard's getting points and shooting on the power play. Great. Good. Okay. Kane got a goal today. Good. For 40 minutes, it didn't look like we were missing McDavid much, much, much. We were missing McDavid and his creativity and the presence that he is on the ice, for sure. But as far as keeping the game tight and close and playing gritty kite to a team, we had that figured out for 40 minutes. And then the third period happened, and that's just a whole other bad. Um, under the bad, we're going to go with, defensive laps and I'm not gonna single out one person because it's a five-man defense it's a five-man it's a five-man rotation five men on the ice that need to stop the puck from going into certain areas and prevent people from getting within a five-foot radius of your goalie let's all be a hundred percent honest that five-foot radius in front of your goalie should be no man's land for the other team that should be you step here you get dick shot you step in this five foot radius, you get cross checked, you get hit, you get knocked on your ass that you don't want to come back into this five foot radius. That's five guys on the ice that need to feel that way. All five guys on the ice need to feel that. You're in this five foot radius, you're going to feel when you're there. Unfortunately, this Oilers team doesn't play that way. This Oilers team is, hey, here's, here's breakfast, here's lunch. Here's supper. Oh, and in case we haven't given you enough, here's some dessert too. That's what that third period was. We gave Minnesota breakfast, lunch, supper, and dessert. All in one period. All in a span of maybe 10 minutes. I'm not going to put it on one guy. Campbell played hell of a good game. Again, Campbell gave the Oilers a chance to win tonight. How often could we say that last year where we were saying Jack Campbell played well enough to win? Jack Campbell played well enough that the Oilers should have won the game. Last year it was like, holy crap. Jack Campbell played so bad that we had no chance of winning the game. It's early. I guarantee you it's early. But it's a new Jack Campbell and I'm liking what I'm seeing. The battle, the compete. He's not giving up the softies. Again, we'll go through game goal by goal and... Do the Oilers know how to count to five? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I can't put my uh, ring finger up before I put my... It, it's a thing. Um, Because <laughs> too many men, too many men, too many men. Three too many men calls against the Oilers. Three of them. The Oilers had three penalties all game. They played disciplined. But they were all too many men's. Again, is it just line juggling and nobody knows who's playing with who? And if that's the case, then that's on the coach. Sure. He, I, I agree that we need to get solidified lines and stop. Blender. Agreed. No, no more blender, please, because clearly the players don't know who's coming on, who's going off, when they're coming off, when they're going off. And in that same breath and in that same sequence, it goes with the defense, too. We've got seven guys out there that play defense. Can we just drop one guy? Like, please. I don't, at, at this point, I don't care who it is. Can we just drop one of the defensemen and have 60... 
12 forwards. Because this experiment of CC with Nurse and Kulak with Bouchard and then Kulak with DeHarnay and then Kulak with Broberg and Nurse with Broberg and Nurse with DeHarnay. It's not working. <laughs> Please. So again, first period, good. Oh, there's goal, Bouchard. Kane and Drysad will get your assist. Good. Happy for it. Okay, Bouchard, take that shot more often, please. And I'm going to say this on the power play, too. Take that shot more often. We, the Oilers, got to stop looking for McDavid and Dreisaitl on the power play. Let the defenseman shoot. Open a lane for him. And when it's there, take it. Somebody other than McDavid and Dreisaitl take shots on the power play. It works. Unfortunately, not even a minute later, Rossi ties the game up. Again, Fogel. Wow, what a game by Fogel. Two, Fogel gets his first of two, assisted by Bouchard and Ekholm. There's that Bouchard name again. Good jump up shot by Fogel. Like the work ethic that guy did this game. Okay, now we're cooking with peanut oil. 2-1, but very short-lived. Hartman gets his first of three. Yeah, Hartman got a hat trick. Hartman got six points tonight. Six out of seven. Not bad. In essence, he was their offense. Going into the second first intermission, Oilers are tied to two. Things could be worse. Things could be and should have been worse if not for Campbell being Campbell. New Year Campbell. But, again, we get into the second period. Fogel gets the second. Assisted by Nurse and Hyman. Oh, another defenseman getting points. I liked it. I like this. That's good. Defenseman jumping up. Defenseman playing offense. But let's not forget. Let's not forget why you're a defenseman in the NA fucking hell. You're a defenseman. You got to play on the back side before you can jump up on the front side. So if you're shit on the back side, it doesn't matter how many points you get on the front side. You could get six points. If you're giving up seven the other way, it's not going to work. But, again, going into the third and in, second intermission, we're up 3-2. Can't complain about it. Oilers are in a good spot. We might actually steal one out of Minnesota. Fuck me. Goal, Minnesota. Goal, Minnesota. Goal, Minnesota. And just like that, it's 5-3. to three. Hartman, Zuccarello, and Eckerson... And then, oh, we get a power play. Power play late. Kane, wouldn't you believe it, scores on a power play assisted by Bouchard and Drysdale. We got some hope. It's 5-4. Oh, no, we don't. No, we really, we really don't. Throw in a fight by Kane there and in the first period again. So that's two fights in two games. Okay, now you're, now you're showing you're pissed off. Now you're showing the heart and why we brought you here. Now you're showing that you care. You got that goal. You got to go on assist this game, Kane. Go assist and fight. Gordy Howe Hatcher. That's exactly what this team needs. More of it, please. Bring it into New York for New York on Thursday. Again, the next game is on Thursday. Hartman scores 6 4. Hatrick and Fogno gets the empty netter. 7 4 final. Oilers' record is now 1 and 4. They were outshot 31-29 in this game. Power plays for the Oilers. They went one for five. One for five. And there was a five on three thrown in there. Did we forget how to power play? Again, the only penalties that Edmonton took were the three too many men's. Can't complain about the PK. It was good. Perfect. 0 for 3 was Minnesota on the power play, but it's the 5 on 5 in the defense zone that still scares me. And it comes down to details, and we can't fix it. Can we? Can, they got to fix the details. I, I will constantly say it 
the devil is in the details, and unfortunately the details don't get paid attention to by the Oilers. Five-man units. They're just not detail-oriented. Is that on the coach? Is the coach setting them up to succeed? Is the coach preparing them? And if he is, then why are the players not going out and executing? Like As a coach, I can understand you can only preach and you can only teach. You can only say everything a certain amount of times. I get that. So when does it become here mentally for the Oilers that they need to figure it out? Because I think that's exactly what it is. It is all between the ears with this other scene. They'll figure it out. We just want it to happen sooner than later. Will they figure it out on Thursday? Will they figure it out on Sunday? Will they wait till November to figure it out? We don't have those answers. Only people that have those answers are in that Oilers locker room. And they need to look at themselves in those mirrors and figure out why we... I can't say we, they are 1-4-1. One, and one. It's not a terrible start. One win and you're right back up in the standings rocketing. Like, that's the thing with this year's standings. Like, it's not doom and gloom. Like, they are legitly one win from jumping up from bottom to wild card. Into the hunt. So again, my name is Matt for Oilers After Dark. Just a quick little rant about... The Oilers losing 7-4 tonight. I get it. They don't do well in Minnesota. I get it. It's been since 2019, but this isn't the 2019 team. This is 2023. we got to stop being scared of yesteryear ghosts and stop playing in a barn and scared of our own shadows. It's time for this team to build the identity. It's time for this team to prove why Gretzky thinks that this team could be as good if not better than the 80s Oilers. Time to prove it. As some people would say, it's time to nut up or shut up. If you like this video, please comment. Hit that little subscribe button. Hit the bell, lets you know every time I go live with these. And when we do live, when, I go, when we upload these and when we go live, we're gonna go live Thursday for the Rangers in town for the Hall of Fame, the Oilers Hall of Fame game. Charlie Huddy and Doug Waite are honored to the Ring of Honor. We'll see you there. Again, my name is Matt. For all of us at Oilers After Dark, be good to your fellow man. Have a good night, guys. Peace.